Hello, hope you're all doing well. We are returning to our regularly scheduled programming here. We have a Warrior's Den this week with some new news of the upcoming patch that we'll be dropping next week. With this, we did get patch notes, which we will go ahead and detail a little bit of as there are a lot of changes coming. This is a balance patch and we'll be tuning characters. To kick it off, we have a ranked order this weekend. Be the faction with the most ranked matches won. We also have a new arcade quest this week for the Black Prior. It is Vortiger's task. And we have some minor matchmaking changes. They have been changing the matchmaking each week for the last couple of weeks now. This week we have a additional set of testing parameters that they're sending out for everybody to play with. Not only will this let us have a different matchmaking for what we're playing, but it will give us a different matchmaking in the future as they've also added more analytics to find out the match qualities. They're going to be collecting a little bit of data and then once they have enough data they will be reverting it back to the old matchmaking. So this would be the matchmaking of two or three months ago. Hopefully that should result in less complaints and then we'll be getting better matchmaking in the future with an actual matchmaking system that, that will take some factors of how you actually play into account. They have directly addressed some of the UI complaints. One of those is the the player has left things that pop up and cover the chat box while you're trying to talk. They are looking at fixing that and we should be seeing something sooner rather than later. And then right before we jump into the patch notes, we do have elite outfits and a new type of outfit that will be coming next week. It is currently just labeled redacted. We don't know what they are, but they are renaming mask outfits to illustrious outfits and we will see what happens there. I would assume that that means we're going to be getting some sort of large scale effect because illustrious, I don't know, that sounds like something very big and like it's making it more than just a mask. And with the new outfit type that's coming next week, that will be kickstarting the event. They will be detailing the event next week as well as giving us access to it. So next week on the 14th, we will have a new For Honor event game mode to play, some new loot to gain, and potentially some new armor and weapons. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the patch notes. So to start the patch notes, we are getting some updates to the arcade mode. We are getting the harbor map added to the potential quest maps. So we will be able to play the harbor there. They're adding two new objective types to weekly quests. They're adding a survival quest, which is stay alive until the timer runs out. Bots will continuously spawn. Basically a wave based mode. Then we are getting a kill target mode, which gives us multiple enemies with one single enemy to go chase down and kill. I do enjoy the fact that we are getting some tweaks here that will give us some form of additional gameplay for this paid game mode. We are getting the in-game HUD changed, so the Assassin's Creed event gave us a preview of the new Dominion HUD that we are going to be getting. We're basically going to be getting that, except we are changing the position of the timer from the top right to the top center. That's not a huge change, but it means that the how long the match has been going for before it times out will now be dead center rather than all the way on the far right. With this patch, they are also nerfing Revenge. Revenge will no longer be granted in 1v1 situations or when you are outnumbering your opponents. This means that you will no longer get 1v1 revenge and kill your enemy because you're an assassin and you have attacks generate revenge and then kill them because you dodged two attacks. With this they are also tweaking how much revenge you gain. This should help you with outnumbered fights for when you get outnumbered so that your revenge will cap much faster. In a 1v2, so you against two enemies, you will now be gaining 0.7% revenge from 0.05. In a 1v3, you will now be getting 0.9% revenge up from 0.75. In a 1v4, you will now be getting full scale revenge 1.0 up from 0.8. So we did see a significant increase in how much revenge you get. I don't know if this will balance out not getting revenge at all in a 1v1 when you get ganked, but it should improve the overall fighting experience with revenge. They did discuss this last week, I know I didn't cover that, but they want to move revenge from a tool in 1v1 fights completely because it results in you not having a good experience where you will either get revenge and the enemy won't or the enemy will get revenge and knock you down and then kill you in a 1v1 or you'll simply max out your revenge the minute a 1v2 happens and in that situation that's no good either because that means team fighting is always negative. 
They don't want that to happen. In team modes, they do want you to have a team fight, and they want you to be able to assist your teammates, and especially get that last hit in. It's a common scenario where you would run in to help a teammate, throw up one attack, and then the enemy pops revenge. They don't want that to happen anymore. If you're 2v1, you should be able to help your teammate. Another general balance change that we're having is they're changing the unbalanced state. It no longer has dodge properties. Previously, when you would throw an out of stamina opponent, it would have a 300 second dodge window where they can't be attacked. With this change, they are now removing that so when you knock somebody down, they can be hurt the entire duration of them falling down. I don't know exactly what this is going to change because I'm kind of a scrub, but I mean kind of, maybe a little bit of a generous there, but we'll be finding out soon from characters in the community such as Freeze. He's already going to be testing it the minute it drops, so thank you, Freeze. This will be changing some max punishes. Other heroes won't be getting any changes to their max punishes, but overall, this will be a good change to the out-of-stamina plays, I think. I'm really hoping it doesn't end up being something massive, like the ability to one-shot some heroes if they go out of stamina, but I also can't see that happening. From there, we have the fighter specifics. The Shinobi slide tackle is being nerfed from 300 milliseconds into the dodge to 600 milliseconds into the dodge. This means that it will now initiate much later, giving you some room to actually dodge the slide tackle if they're constantly out of lock spamming it. This should bring him in line with characters such as Raider and Warlord on how they do their running attacks. An additional Shinobi change is his zone attack, third strike, can now be fainted. Zhang Jun has had his uninterruptible stance removed on the Doshi Choke, and his feet, Soothing Mist, has been nerfed fairly significantly. If he has no enemies nearby, it has been reduced from 25 HP to 10, and at 4 enemies nearby, it is being reduced from 85 HP to 30. All of the values in between there have been similarly adjusted, so it is a massive nerf across the board for Soothing Mist. They have also doubled the cooldown, so it is now 2 minutes instead of 1 minute. Their idea behind this is they want to make it matter more when you use the ability rather than just simply use it anytime it's off cooldown. However, I feel this is a little bit of an overtune, and rather the consideration when to use it will be a consideration into when to pick it, because nobody's going to be picking it as a feat anymore. It's a little overtuned in my opinion, but we'll see. It might still be one of the strongest team fighting feats available. They're also changing how revenge attacks work for the feat on some of the assassins. Will no longer generate revenge when attacking soldiers, pikemen, and archers, which means if you're fighting somebody, you have to actually be fighting something. My understanding is this means champions will still be giving you revenge, and so will fighting actual opponents. So basically, anything you lock onto will still generate revenge. Punch through has been buffed so that it now applies to light attacks that are blocked but not interrupted. This is largely just a consistency change, as previously they would deal chip damage, but now they also do punch through because they are connecting hit. The Doom Banner and Stalwart Banner have both been buffed to no longer disappear when the user dies. This means if you throw down your banner in a team fight and then get killed first, you still help your team. They've also done some minor perk tweaking, so your gear will matter more. Survival Instinct, when in critical health, you will now gain 25% stamina cost reduction, up from 15. Last Stand will generate more damage reduction, when in critical health, you will gain 40% damage resistance, up from 20. Crush Them, the perk where after a kill, your next attack deals 30% more damage instead of 20. That is a 10% buff there, and Early Reaper. On spawn, your next attack deals 30% more damage, up from 20. They've also changed Fresh Focus. When out of stamina, blocks and parries recover 20% stamina, and counter guard breaks also recover 20% stamina. That's a fairly hefty change. I think I'm going to try and pick that feed up, because that is an excellent gear perk to have. They've also made some minor breach map changes with Hollowed Bastion and... Kaza Castle, Kazan. These are largely just minor changes. The Hollowed Bastion is being reoriented, so you will get a slightly better view of the lane. They've also streamlined the fight experience in Capture Point 5, so that you will have a better experience on the final point for both Hollowed Bastion and Kazan Castle. 
I think that's where we'll end the patch notes. There are a ton of bug fixes, but reading through it, it seems like most of them are kind of minor. They're mostly things that are just tweaks as to how they work, and they aren't going to be changing actual fight characteristics. I could be wrong about that, but at a glance, it doesn't seem like it's doing anything to actual fight characteristics. So I will go ahead and skip those. If you do want to read them yourself, you can check them out on forhonor.ubisoft.com. Otherwise, it's just some minor tweaks that should make the overall experience a little more smooth. So we should be pretty good there. I believe that does cover everything worth covering this week on the Warrior's Den and partially the last two weeks as well. Given that both weeks we had a Q&A with the fight team where they told us about what they're working on and answered some of our questions. And we can see in these patch notes what they've actually done to address some of those concerns. So as always, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you on the battlefield.